tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow. We're gonna be okay, Sandy. There'll be sun. The sun will come out tomorrow. So you gotta hang on till tomorrow. Tomorrow, I love you. Now, it's, <laughs> it's Christmas season. And one of the great Christmas movies that is planned is called Annie. Annie is a Buddhist movie, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I want you to look right here. You're going to see a picture of Kuzanjane Wallace, the star of Annie, and Jamie Foxx. Our lecture today is called Annie. The Buddhist lecture. We are going to show you how Annie is a Buddhist movie. And we're going to use things like Annie to teach you true Buddhism. Let's get into the story of Annie. For us, it's a hard knock life. For us, Sandy, wait! Stop! Why are you running? The image and lessons of Buddhism that we learn comes from Asians. Most of us in America see Buddhism as an oriental religion where we have this image of a Buddha statue sitting cross-legged meditating or we see a bald-headed Asian monk in a Buddhist robe. Such images of Buddhism are the farthest from the truth in regards to what is true Buddhism. The recorded Buddhist history that we have arrived on the world stage about 3,000 years ago. The Buddha emerged in a place that was called in the old days Eastern Ethiopia. Eastern Ethiopia came uh, the Indus Valley Civilization. Many scientists note that Egypt got its knowledge from the Africans of Asia. The Buddha was known as a Dravidian or a people known in any today as the Dalits or the untouchables. Before the time of the Buddha, a 1,000 year war took place in India known as the Mahabharata. When the Buddha Shakyamuni arrived on the world stage, a new codex emerged whereas one group of humans devised a plan to dominate another group. This scheme was called caste, a plan where, based on color whereas the Aryans could maintain supremacy by regulating their ancestors to higher positions in life. This is where racism comes from. Today, the caste system is still practiced in India and around the world, even in America where we have racism. People of white skin have an inherent advantage of those of darker skin color. The Buddha Shakyamuni fought against the caste system and he left his highest teachings called the Lotus Sutra where the Buddha vowed to make all humans equal to himself. The original Annie movie is based on the 1920s cartoon character Little Orphan Annie. Annie became a successful stage play and in 1982 Annie became a movie. The 1982 Annie movie could not have emerged as a paradigm of a true Buddhist story. The 1980 Anna movie is a Buddhist story and that Buddhism is life, but it, and it, and that it deals with human nature. However, the Annie of 1982 was not a story of human equality. The new Annie movie is a clear cut challenge to racism and inequality. The December 2014 Anna movie is an outright Hollywood propagation propaganda movie that promotes equality. The Anna movie is no happenstance or accident. The Anna movie is a clever work of a group 
dedicated to promoting equality among humans. This is why the anime movie of 2014 is a Buddhist movie because it promotes freedom, justice, and equality. First term I sang Al Green. In my second term, I'm going with Young Jeezy. <laughs> She'll say, yeah. I sing that to her sometimes. Today is Christmas Day. Friday, the 25th of December. Now, Young Zeezy, Jeezy, this week, rented a theater in Atlanta, Georgia. The rapper rented a theater in Atlanta, Georgia. And he rented the whole theater and he brought a group of youth to see the movie Annie because he understood the importance of seeing the movie Annie. He understood Daddy Warbucks and he brought gifts to children. This is a raffle because the raffle understood. The raffle got it. Ladies and gentlemen, those who are learning Buddhism, they got it. Now, I can assure you one thing, ladies and gentlemen, the people who didn't get, or who do not get, that Annie is a Buddhist movie, are Buddhists. Specifically, the African American Buddhists don't get that Annie is a Buddhist movie. They don't get it. And the reason, ladies and gentlemen, that they don't get it it's because African Americans are being misled with the Buddhist teachings. They learn not necessarily Buddhism, but what they learn is Japanese culture or Asian culture. This is not the true Buddhist teachings. They don't get it. Listen, you SGI members, you Nichiren Shoshu members, you Nichiren Shu members, you don't get that the movie Annie is a Buddhist movie. Let's go into doctrinal evidence and show you and teach you about the Buddhist, about Buddhism, and how Annie is a Buddhist movie. Let me get, now, some of you out there who gotta go show, of course, this is the SGI, they wrote the major writings of Nichiren. Now, for the guy who wants to challenge me, on the authentic writings of Nichiren, the ghost show, the gift of right is an authenticated ghost show. This ghost show has been authenticated by all Nichiren sets as being a legitimate ghost show. So before you try to take me there, this is an authentic ghost show that was written uh, by Nichiren Shonen while he was at Mount Minabu. Now, let's read. Now, if you have a ghost show, the ghost show is called the gift of rice. The gift of rice would give you a different and a clearer understanding of Buddhism than that which the Japanese and the Asians are teaching. Now, in the gift of rice, uh, in the ghost show it says, the true path lies in the affairs of this world. The Golden Light Sutra states, quote, To have a profound knowledge of this world is itself Buddhism. The Nirvana Sutra states, Now, the Nirvana Sutra is the last sutra that the Buddha wrote. He says the Nirvana Sutra states, All of the non-Buddhist scriptures and writings in society are themselves Buddhist teachings not non-Buddhist teachings. Listen, the Buddha Shakyamuni himself said that what all of the non-Buddhist scriptures and writings of society are themselves Buddhist teachings, not non-Buddhist teachings. He goes on further. When the great teacher Milo compared these passages with the one from the sixth volume of the Lotus Sutra, that reads, quote, No world affairs of life 
or work are ever contrary to the true reality. He revealed their meanings and pointed out that although the first two sutras are profound, since their meaning is still shallow and all fails to approach that of the Lotus Sutra, they relate to secular matters in terms of Buddhism, whereas the Lotus Sutra explains that in the end, secular matters are the entirety of Buddhism. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to get it. In Buddhism, secular matters are the entirety of Buddhism. And if you really want to understand Buddhism, you should understand the movie Annie. The movie Annie is a Buddhist movie. Why is it a Buddhist movie? Why is it Buddhism? Because it teaches freedom, justice, and equality. We must have freedom, justice, and equality, and that is what the Buddhism is based on. The Buddhism is based on the Dharma. And when you understand the Dharma, the Dharma is right thinking, right aspiration. The eightfold path of the Buddha, that is the Buddha Dharma. And you must get that and you must understand that. Now, let's get off into Buddhism and let me explain to you how and why it is important to have African American teachers. See, in Nichiren Shoshu, there are no black teachers. There are no people other than some Japanese trying to teach you something. How are you going to learn by one man or one group who have exclusivity? That is not the teachings of the Buddha or the SGI who only have one man who's supposed to be the master and teach you everything. They're not giving you a clear perspective of Buddhism. Now, the Gosho reads, not the Gosho, but the Lotus Sutra reads, it says only Buddhas know the true entity of all phenomena. That is, that's the ten aspects. That is, when you see a movie like Anna, that is, in appearance, nature, entity, power, influence, inherent cause, relationship, latent effect, manifest effect, and the consistency of the beginning to the end. We will show you how the movie Annie represents the Buddha Dharma. Let's get into it and let's learn true Buddhism outside the spectrum of the Japanese or Asians. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, that Buddhism is not an oriental religion. Buddhism started in India. It started with a group of people called the Dravidians. The Buddha was a Dravidian. He was from the indigenous tribe of Hebrew. And he was not an Aryan. The Buddha fought for freedom, justice, and equality. Now, when we come to the Buddhist teachings, we must understand Buddhism from the standpoint of the Lotus Sutra, which is the highest teachings of the Buddha. Now, let's get into the story of Annie, and we're going to show you how this is a movie of freedom, justice, and equality because the Buddha understood the ten aspects of all phenomena. Now, one of the things that you must understand about the movie Annie, and when I went to the movie and I looked at the movie, and I saw that black hair, I said, something is going on here. Now, I would like for you to read, to listen to my lecture called Good Hair. When you see a movie like Annie, and you see a movie that transcends itself from a white girl with red hair to an African-American young lady with black hair, and you see black hair that's going on, you must know that something is going on. Because in America, you are not going to see a movie with black hair. 
That is a phenomenal. That's something that's going on here. And we are going to explain to you the importance of the hair and what's going on with this movie, Annie. Let us get into this a little bit deeper as we explain to you that Annie is a Buddhist movie. There are 400 white billionaires who have more wealth in America than all of the 45 million black Americans combined. Just 50 years ago, until the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was passed, America was a nation of apartheid, legal discrimination, and inequality. Currently, African Americans are fighting a battle of equality on almost every front. Even in Buddhism, we are fighting a battle. Now, currently, African Americans are faced with a new and formidable enemy called racism without races. It is a proven fact, and science proves it, that black Americans live 24 hours in a system of inequality. Our nation is currently in a battle between police shootings of unarmed black teenagers and inequality in America. One chilling fact is that in America, we have more African Americans in jail and in our criminal justice system in 2014 than we had slaves in the 1860s. Pew, Pew research show an increase in white wealth and a decline in black wealth in 2014. Pew research also shows that in America, medium white net worth is worth 14 times greater than black net worth. This comes from a history of discrimination, redlining, lack of getting loans, and being treated unfairly. Now, the 2014 movie Annie is a rare and unique circumstance, whereas the production of a major motion picture in America was produced with equality, justice, and freedom. Commiserate of most Hollywood pictures produced by whites in Hollywood. Now, there is a clear-cut explanation or a cause and effect relationship that explains as to how and why the 2014 anime movie emerged on the world stage. The Lotto Sutra expounded by the Buddha Shakyamuni says that, quote, only Buddhas know the true entity of all phenomena, that is, appearance, nature, entity, power, influence, inherent cause, relationship, latent effect, manifest effect, and the consistency from the beginning to the end. In short, there is no way a white America was about to magically and ethically reduce a movie whereas an African American is featured as a 21st century iconic and lovable character as the formal red-headed Annie. Buddhism teaches us that all phenomena have a karmic cause and effect relationship. Ultimately, the 2014 Annie movie emerged from the Buddha nature of fame actor Will Smith and his wife Jaden Smith. Will Smith, who started in the TV series Fresh Prince of Bel Air, is an African American who is one of Hollywood's most successful and revered actors who has the power in Hollywood to get any project or movie made that he chooses. The movie Annie emerged because the powerful and honored Will Smith was the producer of the movie and Annie and Mr. Smith single-handedly carved the path for his daughter Willow Smith. The idea of the movie Annie came about because Will Smith and his wife Jaden Smith wanted to make a movie for their daughter because they had the power to do so. Not any African American woman can come can become any, but if you are the Fresh Prince of Bel Air and you want to carve a pathway for your daughter, Mr. Smith has the power to create and get the top production credit for his beloved daughter. When the when they started production on the movie, 
Willow Smith, a rich kid, the daughter of Will Smith, decided that her intuition told her that the part and the time was not right for her. She said she just wanted to chill. She was a rich kid who can get what she want and do what she wanted, and she decided she didn't want the movie. She didn't want to do this. This opened up the opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, for the young Kuvanjane Wallace. Now, Kuvanjane Wallace, ladies and gentlemen, is a bodhisattva. A bodhisattva is an ordinary person who takes up a course in his or her life that moves in the direction of a Buddha. You are a bodhisattva. I am a bodhisattva. Actually, anyone who directs their attention, their life to practicing the way of life of a Buddha is a bodhisattva. A bodhisattva is born and not made. In Japan, for example, they have priests called Nichiren Shoshu. Many of the boys of the priests are born to be a priest. Just because they are born to be a priest does not make them a born bodhisattva. A bodhisattva and a priest are two different people. A bodhisattva can be born a priest, but a priest is not born a bodhisattva. Ladies and gentlemen, on August the 28, 2003, in Homa, Louisiana, a young girl by the name of Kuzanie Wallace was born. Now, in 2012, she beat out 4,000 other local kids to play Hush Puppy, the inadoptable child prodigy and survivalist who lives with her dying father in the back by your woods in Louisiana. Director Bing Zingling told the Daily Beast that when he auditioned Nazi, that's a nickname, he immediately realized that he discovered what he was looking for and changed the Beast script to accommodate her strong will personality because she's a phenomenon. World famous designer Giorgio Armani called Kuvazanie a savant. Giorgio Armani says, quote, Kuvazanie is so talented despite her young age. Her kindness, curiosity, and openness toward others really struck me as they are all the traits I admire. It's the very reason that I wanted her to be the face of Armonte Jr. Imagine an African-American young girl becomes the face of the Armonte Jr. The one face and spirit of 11-year-old Bonisavo Quinvazanie Wallace is able to pull people together. She is a black face that white children who wear the Armonte will learn to know and respect. She is like a Michael Jackson who used his life to bridge people to come together. Michael Jackson's music brings cultures and people together. That is the work of a Bodhisattva, ladies and gentlemen. A Bodhisattva is not necessarily a Japanese born or a Japanese priest. Let us take a brief look at Kwanzaa Wallace in an interview, and we're going to look at her and we're going to close this lecture. Wallace may be my favorite interview ever on GMA, which is why I'm so glad to welcome her back. She is the youngest nominee for Best Actress in the History of the Oscars. She'll return soon to the big screen in a modern version of Annie, and she's brought a special guest here. Sandy, welcome back. How are you? I'm doing very well, I guess. You look great. You look great. I love the dress. I love the nails, the whole thing. And how's Sandy doing? She's doing good. Yeah. <laughs> she's very calm right now, but she looked a little scared. When everybody out there cheer. Yeah, she's my dog. She is your dog. She is one of a kind, and she will always be. She will be. You know, the last time you were here, it, it was just a rumor that you were going to be doing Annie, and now it's, it's, it's actually happened. You've actually done it. It must have been a dream come true. Yeah, I was really, I was really happy, and it, it, it's amazing how you can see how a rumor becomes to reality, and how it increases into like a real reality. Yeah, and, and we're going to show a little bit of that reality right now, because you and Sandy have brought us a little bit of a sneak peek of the movie, which is coming out in December. Yes. Let's take a look. I love this city. No matter who you are, what you are, you just gotta want it bad enough. 
Mary's never gonna find her family. None of us are. We all have family somewhere. Just because you can run from it doesn't mean that you should. What up, Gallo? You're up five points in the poll. Mm. He saved the little girl from getting hit by a van. So what's the hustle? The more we're seen together, the better it is for my campaign. City needs me. All right, take it easy, Batman. <laughs> Oh, it looks like so much fun. And when the Hard Knock Life came out, you started to bop around. Yeah, that's one of my favorite songs from Annie. Ooh, see? But, yeah, it was really fun to, like, sing all the songs. I'll bet, I'll bet. And it must have been so much fun to work with Jamie Foxx. What was he like? Yeah, he was really funny. He was really sweet. He was, like, the nicest man I've ever met. It was really fun to, like, see all the things with him and, like, make jokes around. So. He's a funny guy, talented guy too. Yes, he's really talented and really funny. And and you and you, and you, and you learned how to you learned how to play with Sandy and did a lot of tricks and also Cameron Diaz. I heard she was uh, really great to you on set. Yeah, she was really nice. She was like a mom to me because she would just make sure I didn't like jump the wrong way or that she gave me a tip on life or something like that. So. That's fantastic. You finished the movie now. How's school going? School's going really well. My report card was really good. Yay. <laughs> but, um, so. What's your favorite good. subject? My favorite subject is science. Yeah? So when you grow up, uh, are you going to use that? Yes, I am. What are you going to do? I want to be a veterinarian. Veterinarian? No kidding. Yes. Now that's, oh, Sandy got very excited when you said that. <laughs> very good news. I wonder what Sandy's seeing over there right now. And, and so are you, now that it's summertime is coming up, you're not going to be in school, you're going to be working again? You know what you're going to be doing next? Um, I don't know yet. <laughs> Say it, Marty. Okay. Okay, um, um, but yeah, so um, I'm on summer break right now. So. Okay, well enjoy it. And we cannot wait to see Annie. It's coming out right around Christmas time. And it's going to be great. hope you come back when it comes out. Yeah, I hope so. That would be great. Ladies and gentlemen, I rolled my sleeves up, and I rolled my sleeves up, and I created what was called the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. And I'm able today to give wonderful lectures and teach Buddhism the way it's supposed to be based on the Lord of Sutra. But let me bring our lecture and the Buddhist lecture to a close. I want to close with words from the writings of the messenger of the Buddha, Nichiren Shon. He wrote a Gosho called the true aspect or the real aspect of Gohanta. And this is what Nichiren says. He says, quote, a non-Buddhist document relates that because Emperor Han believes his age report, the waters of a river froze on the spot. Another tells how Li Kang, because he was eager to revenge his father, shot an arrow all the way up to his feathers into a boulder hidden in the grass. The commentaries of Tentai and Milo make it perfectly clear that faith is the cornerstone because the Han Emperor believed completely in his retainer's words, the river froze over. And Liu Kang was able to pierce a rock with his arrow because he fully believed it to be the tiger that had killed his father. How much more so is this true of Buddhism? Imagine a Quinn Von Shane who is a non-Buddhist, a Dr. Marvel to King who is a non-Buddhist, and all the rappers and the people who are non-Buddhist, if they could do so much being a non-Buddhist, imagine how great life could be if people adopted the Lotus Sutra and became a Buddhist. How much more true can faith, how much more true can it be fighting for freedom, justice, and equality if you are a Buddhist, you can even do better. So, let's close this lecture out. 
and understand that Buddhism is humanism. Buddhism is life. Buddhism is freedom, justice, and equality. Thank you very much. I move through time and space and travel intergalactic. My thinking is elastic. When it comes to religion, I'm the coolest, I'm the smoothest, and the cutest, I'm the proud black Buddhist. I don't practice no Asian religion, I would never make such a decision. Just because you are Asian and bald headed and wear a robe, I'm supposed to be whole. So, when it comes to religion, I'm the coolest, I'm the smoothest, cutest, smoothest, I am the proud black Buddhist.